All Hallows' Eve, Halloween to you and me, is approaching. It was about five or six days away, we think. Uh, many of us will be carving pumpkins to light up our doorways and windows as part of the celebrations. Uh, what do you do with a pumpkin once it's been carved? Does it go to waste, go straight in the bin, or do you then use it for cooking up soups, uh, curries, uh, cakes? New research shows 15 million pumpkins were carved last year. Uh, this is in the UK, and then wasted. Uh, seven out of ten, that is, thrown away. Uh, one in three participants said they didn't even think that carving pumpkins could actually then subsequently be made into food. Joining us from central London is the winner of Celebrity Master Chef Lisa Faulkner and here in the studio the environmental journalist and broadcaster Lucy Siegel. Oh, there she appearing just off in a slightly Halloween-y way. <laughs> yeah, appearing. Well done. <laughs> nice Thank to have you. both of you here. <laughs> uh, Lisa, let's start with you. Um, this, is a, this is a lot of waste, isn't it? With a lot of these things are going to waste. I have to say, at, at home, my wife uh, is, is, pretty, uh, is pretty good on this. Uh, there's always pumpkin soup. Uh, we get a pie out of it as well. Um, uh, but, you know, you, sometimes we're talking about pretty whiskery pumpkins that end up in the kitchen. Yeah, I, I think that it, it's something you do with the kids and it's a really it's really good fun to carve your pumpkins. Um, and so to take it that step further and then cook with them afterwards is a fantastic thing. Great for the children and very, very easy. And, and soup is always a good place to start because also the survey showed that lots of people didn't know how to cook pumpkin or what to do with it. Uh, Lisa, on that point about the fact that, you know, that you've got your pumpkins here, you've got a few in front of you on the table there, the candle guttering, you know, they can, yeah. they can be outside for a week, I don't mind, mine tend to be, in the rain, uh, you know, how long can you leave them before you've, you've got to make use of them? Well, you've got to make use of them before you put them out. So when you're scooping, when you're do doing your carving, scoop out the seeds, take the seeds and clean them up just through a sieve and then put them in the oven. You've got toasted seeds, which are great on a salad. And then or, scoop out the flesh. And that's so easy to put in a roasting tin, a bit of olive oil, some garlic, some sage, a bit of pancetta, and literally put that into your oven and then blitz it up with a stock cube and some cream and you've got a fantastic soup. Um, and then afterwards, you've got your pumpkin to use as your little decoration and then to put just to make sure that you then dispose of it in, in a in a caddy, a vegetable caddy or something like that or a compost heap. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned the seeds, actually. The seeds are actually meant to be very good for you. The pumpkin seeds, Lisa, are meant to be very good for you. Yes. They are really good for you. They're also very, very tasty. People sort of go, oh, really? But actually, they are delicious toasted. Yeah. Um, Lucy, we, we, we look, we're talking about this partly to reflect on the fact that a lot of stuff in our fridges, not just pumpkins, goes to waste. Yes. Uh, but these are a particularly egregious example, you could argue, of people just not think, thinking through what's going on. Here's a food principally a food stuff yeah. that we're using for another purpose and they're not using as food. Yes, this aligns all the things that we kind of worry about when we talk about waste and environment because you're buying it for a novelty reason. You're probably not used to cooking it, which is why Lisa's kind of recipes and ideas are absolutely brilliant. And when you're buying a pumpkin, even though it's quite a large item, most people are not making the connection that it's their responsibility to use the whole of it because that's what we kind of forget about. Yeah, You've bought that's... it. Is it a responsibility then to but use that's it the, That's all? the only way that we're going to kind of make a dent in food waste. We have such an issue with food waste. It's extraordinary. So 800 million people go hungry every day and we throw one third of all food created is thrown away worldwide. It's endemic. It's a real, real issue. And it's about this connection, isn't it? So Lisa talks about what a lovely thing to do with your kids when you're carved yeah. it out to use the scoop things if that's a, a word scooping it's a good word in, it is yeah. a good word the flesh in something else and that's the sort of connection that we need to start making we are trying so hard with food waste and it's really difficult to make a dent and research shows you need to keep talking about it you need to keep coming up with creative solutions and probably we need to be made to feel a little bit guilty which well, is why i use the yeah, r word right lisa lucy talks about inclination but isn't it also about time i mean you know my wife uh, stopped working a few years ago, look after the kids. She's got, she, she, I'm gonna, I was on the point of saying she's got plenty of time for which I'd get a cuff on the back of the head. So I'm not gonna retract that statement, but the point is she's got the time to do it. People lead busy lives. Not everybody feel they've got the, feels they've got yes. the time to actually you know, come up with some of these delicious recipes that you've outlined. Well, 
Well, I think that what you're saying is that the time, and, and if you've got the time to carve the pumpkin and your kitchen's getting messy and you've got the children there anyway, then it's only a little bit extra time to make a soup, which, which children love to do, or roast your pumpkin, do whatever you want with it, or pie. Um, but I think as well, what you were saying about inclination and a responsibility, I feel as a mum, let alone somebody who works in food, that I want to do my bit. That I, if I feel that as well as carving a pumpkin and having a laugh, we are also stopping some little bit of food waste, then that's a fantastic thing. And it's also delicious. Yeah. And I mean, it's a meal, so it's also saving you. Well, I, I'm not. I'm persuaded by most of these meals, but yeah. pumpkin curry. <laughs> yet to persuade it. Because I mean, we're, talk, we're talking about a, a squash that's 92% water. It's I mean, very its water. nutritional value yes. can't be enormous, can it? Yes, but I suppose with a bit of bread, which is one of the terrible items that we throw away. So we throw yeah. 55 loaves of bread away a year in each household. And this is cost, you know, £470 for the average family, £700 for a big family, just thrown in the bin. You might as well set fire to it. Why not? You Have you start tried to setting fire to a this? pumpkin? No, no, nor money, nor <laughs> oh, money, sorry. yes. Uh, no, I don't burn money. But I think that it, it's, it's just about making these connections again. And we know as householders, I feel really guilty when I throw stuff away. And we know it's having an impact and we need to do something when we, yeah, you know, The thing is, Lisa, you know, when we think about people, I was going to use the word husbandry, which we're not allowed to use, are we particularly? But, you know, this idea of having a thrifty larder. Yes. It, it, was, it was propelled by people being short of cash. I mean, there are still people who are short of cash, but a lot of people aren't. And it comes down to time, the time thing, doesn't it? How much time, whether, you're going to be, whether you can be bothered. Well, a thrifty larder is, is, is something that's changed over, uh, over different um, epochs, let's say. So Mrs Beaton, who was fam the famous leader, leader of the thrifty larder, yeah. she said, if you want to be very sustainable and, pr and provide for your family, you should leave aside a, a hectare of woodland. Now, who has a hectare of woodland just going spare? So we have to take this and rework these kind of ideas, which is exactly what Lisa's doing with these recipes. It's about being innovative and creative. Uh, there are so many reasons why we love this story, but... <laughs> <laughs> Particularly this is one. Uh, this is our best piece of PR guff of the day, and I do apologise for describing it thus. The person who, who wrote it probably felt very proud. Laid end on end, on end the uneaten, pump, uneaten pumpkins from the UK would stretch over 2,500 miles all the way from the UK to Azerbaijan. Wow. That conjures up an image, doesn't it? It That's really helpful. does. It does. Jane's but also, I, I, my problem with it is most of our pumpkin ends up on the floor. It goes everywhere. You know, you, you do it with a spoon. You don't want to give them a knife because they're little. And there's bits of pumpkin on the lampshades and there's bits on top of the cabinets. So it's kind of scooping those all together and rinsing them under the tap What's it do before you nice, put them in the oven. your nice cream carpets? <laughs> in the kitchen. <laughs> Lucy, Lisa, thanks both very Thank much you. indeed. Thank you.